There's a shortage oh, yes. of men for the purpose of God. That's right. Now think of it. When it comes to false prophets, yes. not a shortage. No, many. God is not a shortage until many. Jesus said, many, many false prophets, false prophets come. shall come. That's right. And he declared they shall deceive many. Many. That's right. Well, Pastor Gino, you are false because you refuse to teach what will be taught in this video. In John chapter 8, verse 44 and 45, Christ was speaking to the Pharisees when he told them, you are of your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he's the father of lies. In this verse, Satan is literally and metaphorically deemed a father. We could almost treat this verse entirely as a metaphor, if not for Genesis chapter 3, where we learn the serpent has a seed. Okay, and we know that the scriptures often refers to seed and fruit as offspring. Okay, like how God told Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. Okay, he's not talking about multiplying fruits. He's talking about multi multiplying their offspring. Okay, the same when he refers to seed. Okay, there's the seed of the woman. And there's the seed of the serpent. So how did the serpent get a seed? Okay. Genesis chapter six says, when men began to multiply on the earth, the sons of God saw the daughters of men were beautiful and took them as wives. But false prophets, heretics like Geno Jennings, they never address the link between Genesis chapter three in chapter 6, men began to multiply on the earth in Genesis chapter 3. So we know that in Genesis chapter 3, God cursed Eve with the sin against her body. But what is it that entered Eve to wound her into the point where she has a monthly cycle? How did demons get access to the blood of men? We know the scriptures state that life is in the blood. Who taught Adam and Eve the secret knowledge? Because Adam knew nothing prior to eating knowledge or learning knowledge. Okay, that's what the scriptures meant when it says, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They didn't literally eat a fruit. Okay, they were eating knowledge. Eating is a metaphor for receiving, okay, and digesting. You understand? And please understand that evil spirits could not possess men without a blood covenant. So how does a blood covenant manifest by biting a fruit? <laughs> okay. We know the significance of blood covenant so much that God required the firstborn Israelites as a sacrifice. And Christ had to shed his blood for all men. We also know that in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 9, God said he visits the iniquity of the fathers, blood relatives, okay, on to the third and fourth generation. So how does a curse come throughout the bloodlines without demons? God even accepted the shedding of animal blood for the remission of sins under the law of Moses. This goes to show the significance of blood covenants and demons whom are both tormentors and defilers of blood covenants to establish, strengthen, and reinforce their own covenants. But Zeno Jennings lacks this understanding. Hey Amen. Folks, folks pulling on us from everywhere. They, they're pulling on us now. Want us to come to Athens in Greece. Asking to please come, Pastor Jennings, and baptize us. In the name of Jesus Christ, there in Athens. That's right. Amen. The mail is picking up pretty good over there. That's right. Amen. I would love to get there and stand on Mars Hill like Paul. Amen. And tell him as I passed by, I beheld your devotions and saw the inscription at an altar that you built to an unknown God. That's right. Him who you ignorantly wish of him declare I unto I you. I unto you. Okay. Many times, Geno Genesis has compared himself to Apostle Paul and even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he started this sermon saying false prophets will deceive many. 
<laughs> well, in order for them to do so, they must have large congregations all over the world like you, Pastor Gino. Amen. So the mail is coming in. Uh, we even got mail from Damascus. My Lord. Amen. Where, where folks want to be baptized. Hallelujah. My Lord. Thank God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we were blessed to send, I believe it was uh, Bishop Simbali or one of the other ministers he sent, if I'm not mistaken, to Macedonia. Wonderful. In fact, I think it was Bishop Simbali. We sent them to Macedonia. Amen. We got a congregation there. And Macedonia <laughs> went down in water Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when I see these ancient cities and souls crying out all over again, all over again, One. the message is falling right back Amen. where it was before we was even born. That's right. That's right. And hallelujah. Go it to God. That same message is giving us the same exact results. That's right. That he gave his apostles. That's right. You know, you know, it, it, it moves my heart well. Amen. And let me know that God's word is true, that he's the same yesterday and today. Thank God and forevermore. Amen. And what's so beautiful about it, it's a hardcore message. Yes, it is. None of that silly putty. That's right. Not weak. Not weak. Solid. Firm. That's right. And they're crying out for it by the thousands. That's right. And they're shocking a lot of people. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that we did not resort to the hypocritical methods that men are resorting to, trying to water down the roughness of the Bible. That's right. The hardcore truths of the Bible is convicting men of their sins, even if it means your church buildings will be closed down by the Gentiles, hypocrite. Then answered I and said unto him, and said to him, what are these two olive trees? What are these two olive trees? Upon the right side of the candlestick. Upon the right side of the candlestick. You see how the book of Revelation refers to the two witnesses as olive trees? This is likened to the tree of knowledge in the midst of the garden, which represents knowledge from a source, which was the serpent, which is a conglomerate of fallen angels. The fruit of the tree represents the deeds of the serpent taught to Eve, who taught Adam. The serpent did not teach Adam because God cursed Adam for hearkening to the voice of his wife. So to better understand, let us read from Enoch chapter 69 verse 5 through 12 uh, verse 5 uh, chapter 69 it says and the name of the second is Asbil this one suggested an evil plan to the children of the holy angels and led them astray so that they corrupted their bodies with the daughters of men angels corrupting themselves with the daughters of men verse 6 and the name of the third is Gadriel. This is the one that showed all the deadly blows to the sons of men. And he led astray Eve. And he showed the weapons of death to the children of men, the shield and the breastplate, and the sword for slaughter, and all the weapons of death to the sons of men. And from his hand they have gone out against those who dwell the dry ground from that time and forever and ever. And the name of the fourth is Namiel. This one showed the sons of men the bitter and the sweet, and showed them all the secrets of their wisdom. He taught men the art of writing the ink and paper through this many have gone astray, from eternity to eternity and to this day. Verse 10, For men were not created for this, that they should confirm their faith like this with pen and ink. For men were created no differently from the angels, so that they might retain righteous and pure and death, which destroys everything, would not have touched them. But through this knowledge of theirs, they are being destroyed, and through this power, death consumes them. And the name of the fifth is Kasdaya. This one showed the men, the sons of men, all the evil blows of the spirits and of the demons 
and the blows that attack the embryo in the womb so that it miscarries. Talking about abortion. The men and women learned how to abort children through the knowledge they received from the fallen angels. Okay, because remember, Adam and Eve didn't even know that they were naked. They had no knowledge of anything except what God was telling them before they fell through sin. Once they fell through sin, they had they started receiving knowledge from God and the fallen angels. It says they t taught them the embryo in the room, uh, how that it might miscarry. And they also taught them the blows that attack the soul, the bite of the serpent. OK, King Solomon said, it, who, who, whomever breaks a hedge, the serpent will bite and the blows that occur at midday and the son of the serpent who is strong. OK, so they taught they taught them the smitings of the sun. OK, remember, God t told Adam that the sun was going to strike him and that he was going to have to till the ground by the sweat of his brow. OK, so the sun is is what. Uh, expedited death into the bodies of men. Men would have to work by the sweat of their brow being struck by the sun to the day that they die. Those, even that was a secret knowledge from the serpent. Okay, because God, Adam was in the presence of God, who was a consuming fire. So he didn't even know that flesh and blood is not supposed to be in the presence of God so long as man is without sin. You understand? But that's a whole nother teaching. Now, remember in Genesis chapter three, God implied that Adam would be struck by the sun while still in the ground, but he was taken from the ground until the day he died. So it was Eve who taught Adam the smitings of the noontide heat, although the serpent taught Eve. Okay, the serpent knew that Adam would die from the secrets of this wisdom. Okay, his death was cut off from immortality and his fellowship with the Most High. That was death for him. So at one point, Adam was seeing in both realms. He was seeing in the spirit realm and he was in the earthly realm. He could see God, but yet he could see the animals and he was able to name the animals and do you know, earthly things. Okay. I would say when Adam sinned, it was equivalent to a man struggling to breathe through an asthma attack or a seizure of some sort. And a man who was struggling with blindness. Okay. The death was so severe to Adam. It, it started the, the time clock of his death. Okay. Adam would not die immediately, but the fact that he could no longer see in the spirit realm as he would in the earthly realm, that was like blindness to him. And now, like David said, we have hand me breaths, hand breaths. He says, my life is as hand breaths. I believe that Adam had the breath of life, which is not a, a gasping for air. You know, now sin has caused so many different things to where man in conversation, he has to catch his breath. Okay, that's those are the events of death. Okay, the things that led up to death, but I don't have time to get into that. Okay, so basically, now men would have to fast and pray just to hear from God. Okay, now I do want to emphasize that Adam was cursed due to the sins of the heart, which is, is described in Matthew chapter 15, verse 19 and 20 where it says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, deaths, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. As we just read in the book of Enoch chapter 69, they, they had to be taught these things from the fallen angels. So Eve was defiled by 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 which says he who commits fornication sins against his own body. And in Enoch chapter 106, we first learn of the plague that turned the Gentiles, okay, causing them to lose their skin pigmentation. Okay, again, as I said in the other video, skin color is the offspring of sin. 
because man was never supposed to lose his skin pigmentation. Okay, skin pigmentation and things like language, uh, the animals turning against men, these are all curses. Okay, these are all curses from the offspring of sin. The scriptures clearly state in Genesis uh, chapter 2, I believe, that Adam was taken from the dust of the earth. And it says so again in Genesis chapter 3. Adam was taken from the brown soil of the earth. Okay, it's not normal for a person to have the expose of, of, of blush in the skin. Red blush from the skin is a wound from the smiting of the serpent. Okay, I don't have time to get into that. And upon the left side thereof. Yes. And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches? Yes. Which threw the two golden pipes. Wait a minute. What be these two olive branches? You know, an olive plant, what comes from the olive plant is olive oil. That's right. So the plant means that these two witnesses That's right. were anointed of God. That's right. That's what that is. Right. What comes from the olive plant? Get it now. Right. Olive, oil. olive oil. What is olive oil for? To anoint. That's right. Uh -huh. So what? these two messengers were the anointed ones of God. They had the spirit of God and they had the power of God. That's right. The anointing of God dropped from their mouth. That's it. That's why they had the golden pipes. Oh, golden pipes. The anointing of God poured out of them. That's right. And their pipes were golden because the information was precious. That's right. Okay. He's right about the metaphors written of the two witnesses in the scriptures. But for the sake of rightly dividing the word of truth, this video is not about the two witnesses. Okay. I only addressed it because this parable is parallel with Adam and Eve. The, uh, in regards to the fruit, uh, seeds, and the tree of wisdom. And Geno Jennings does not believe the fallen angels laid with the women. Therefore, <laughs> he acquits Satan of being a murderer from the beginning. How did the serpent murder Eve? Okay, how did the serpent produce seed? Okay, again, Christ told the Pharisees that they are of their father, the devil. Okay, a father has seed. Okay, the Pharisees rejected the new blood covenant because of their unbelief. Again, life is in the blood and Eve loses so much blood every month. So you got to explain the blood covenants. Because everything God created was good prior to Adam's sin. Okay. He who comes to take life comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So, yes, there is no shortage of false prophets, Geno Jennings. You are one of many who cannot even teach the ABCs of demon possession. But you claim to be an apostle. And you are of your father, the devil. <laughs> Again, your flesh will send you to hell and it won't show up. Okay. You do not teach the blood of Jesus. Okay. Because again, Christ told the Pharisees that they are of their father, the devil, because by them rejecting him, they would reject the blood of Jesus, which is the born, the process of being born again. Okay. For the remission of sins. So it would take God's blood to redeem man because of what the fallen angels did in corrupting the blood of men. I hope you guys understand this. Let me know your thoughts and enjoy the rest of your day.